Today I'm going to talk about the three things I covered in my last flying lesson, namely climbing, descending and turning. And I'll also talk about things I found tricky and what I'm going to do in the next lesson. Before I start a technical update, I'm now able to record in-flight audio off the comm system. I'm almost able to record video. I set it up and then had a little technical problem. So really I only have video of me sitting on the ground before flying. Uh, better than nothing, not much, but we're gonna get there. I completed lessons on climbing, descending and turning. I'm not going to talk about turning too much because I've talked about it in a previous video and it was uh, more of the same sort of stuff. With descending, we were looking at losing altitude in different configurations. That could be a, a normal cruising type speed or descending with the flaps out. Most interesting though was the glide descent where you effectively cut the power. You don't actually turn the engine off, you just reduce the revs of the engine to idle speed so you're effectively gliding. And when you do that, you start to lose forward momentum and you start to lose height because the propeller isn't pulling the aircraft through the air anymore. And the thing about the glide descent is that there is a position you want to get the plane in to give yourself the maximum gliding range. If you're pointed too far down, then you'll gain speed, but you'll hit the ground uh, sooner. And if you're pointed too nose up, then you will lose too much airspeed and you'll stall and lose control. So the point about the glide descent was to set the pitch of the aircraft to give you the optimum airspeed so that you get the maximum gliding range. You don't just reduce the engine revs to idle and glide along for as long as you want. When you're doing this, you need to warm the engine at regular intervals, otherwise you'll get ice in the carburetor and the engine won't perform normally when you do want to get your power back on. But as I understand it, the reason to practice the glide descent is so that you know what to do if the engine ever cuts out. By giving yourself the maximum gliding range, you can either fix what's wrong with the engine or give yourself the best chance of finding somewhere to land in an emergency. Now as with descending we also looked at climbing in different configurations and with different air speeds and different levels of flap. I mean, the most interesting part of that was regaining control after a glide descent and then regaining altitude. When you're in your glide descent uh, eventually you're either going to hit the ground or you're going to pull up out of that glide descent. Now doing that at the end of the glide descent is quite interesting. When you're gliding down to come out of the glide descent, you need to put more power on so you can build your airspeed and stop descending. So after making sure it's okay to do so, you put the power back on. And what the plane wants to do as you put the power on is to nose up. The problem is, if you let the plane nose up and your airspeed is still low, you're going to stall. So what you need to do is put the power on and allow the airspeed to come up until it's high enough that you can start to climb again or maintain level flight. As you start to increase the airspeed, the sheer air pressure on the control surfaces becomes quite high. And so the plane wants to pitch up as it increases airspeed and you have to push it down, which means you're pushing the yoke forward really quite hard to stop it pitching up and then stalling. So for a few seconds, it almost feels like you're fighting the aeroplane because it wants to nose up and you want it to stay level. And once the airspeed is up, you can retrim the plane so you're not fighting to push it forward anymore. Things I found tricky. Well, last time I determined that I would make some radio calls and the first time I did it, I messed it up. The joy of being able to record audio from the aircraft means that I can relive that embarrassment. There are quite a lot of long silences in the original audio, so I've clipped it down a little bit just to stop things getting boring. Staple the radio, Golf, Bravo, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Whiskey, request radio check and taxi information. Fox Whiskey, ring your fires, one will use Jeffrey, left, left, out, second, kill X, one, zero, two, zero. Readability five, taxiing for runway two, two, left, left, wrong, uh, taxiing for runway zero, three, left, uh, QNH, 1020 Golf Bravo Foxtrot Foxtrot Whiskey. There we go. Oh, <laughs> Don't worry. You I made the correction. Message. That's fine. You made the correction. That's the first time. Don't expect it to be perfect first time. You did well. <laughs> well done. Because if you don't practice, you know, yeah. you, you're not you're yeah. not gonna my instructor being very nice and encouraging there. So even though the ground controller said runway 03 left, I was reading from a crib sheet to get my radio calls right and the radio call said a different runway. So I didn't listen to what the controller said. I was so focused on what I was trying to say on the radio that I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Fortunately, my instructor had written down the correct runway and was furiously pointing to it in the cockpit, which is why I realized that I hadn't been listening and corrected myself. So, uh, learning point will be to listen. Oh well. 
Next lesson is about slow flight, so we'll see what happens with that. I have since my last flight finally got my medical certificate. Uh, up until the time that I fly solo, I can fly on my instructor's certificate. I didn't anticipate any problems, but it did occur to me that if the doctor found something untoward, then I would have wasted all of my time learning so far. So really the most sensible thing to do would have been to get the medical certificate before I even started. But it's all done now and I'm medically fit to fly, so that's good news. I've also bought myself a shiny new aviation headset and sunglasses and I'm very excited about trying them out for the first time in an aircraft. And I have decided that I am not going to pose in them like a teenager on Instagram. I changed my mind. See you in the next video.